Hi, this is Greg Benz with a quick overview of how you can use the lab color space in Photoshop to change the color of almost any object. I also want to show you support now in Lumenzio version 1.5 for the lab color space or alternative color spaces such as 32-bit HDR so that you can now use the uh, full power of Lumenzio for luminosity masking on essentially any image in any color space. So this is an image I shot last year in Havana, Cuba. I've already converted it over to the lab color space. You can see the image mode is in lab and um, the reason for that is lab separates the lightness value which is the L channel versus the color channel which are the A and B channels in lab and I'll show that in a second and how we got there but just to kind of you know jump to the the punchline here Here's a uh, couple of adjustments I added to this to change the color of this car to this red color from this original blue color. So very nice natural look to it. And let me show you how I did that. So in the lab color space, the first thing we want to do is understand how curves work. And so normally in RGB space, you'd see red, green, and blue, which means if you shift a curve in RGB, then you're changing the brightness and the color at the same time and it can be pretty confusing as to how you would change the color of an object and more importantly there's no easy way sometimes to, to really mask those colors so um, this color separation in, in lab is going to come in handy in a few ways but first I'm just going to demonstrate curves adjustments globally that is to the whole image so the A channel is magenta and green color balance so by just shifting this up and down I can already start to shift the color of that paint quite a bit or in the B channel this is going to be blue and yellow so I've got the, the blues when I go down and yellows when I go up to make color adjustments so the first thing we want to figure out is how do we take this blue color here and shift it to our target color so what you want to do is load up the eyedropper make sure your sample size is fairly large you don't want to be sampling a bunch of variability and noise so a little bit larger sample area will just kind of smooth things out and then just find some color here that represents kind of the the midpoint of the overall color so to me um, these values are pretty light these are obviously very dark right in here seems like a pretty good place to be so if i sample that and i need to make sure that i'm on the pixel layer i'm going to sample so i sample that and I can see that I've pulled up that color, which in the lab color space is shown here, is going to be, you know, 33 lightness. It's going to be 23 in the A channel, and it's minus 52 in the B channel. So that's our, our original starting point. And let's say we want to make this car more green. So I'm going to go and pick a green value that I think looks pretty decent. This is pretty punchy, but let's go with that. So. This is going to be an A value of minus 55 and a B value of 57. So I've just wrote that down. You would just want to remember that. What we can do now is make a curve adjustment to make a color shift from that blue to that green that we just looked at. So I'm going to go to the A channel and just add a new point by clicking on it. And I'm simply going to type in the value. So we had a starting point of 23 on the original blue and that green was a minus 55 for the A channel and if we go over to the B channel it's going to add another point here and that went from minus 52 originally to our new target of 57 so we can see this is a great candy apple green but it has just completely blown out the image that color has gone everywhere in fact um, it looks like we just kind of replaced the color, but it's such a strong color shift, you just don't really see that there actually is um, some of the underlying color here. And we can pull that back out by a very cool trick using the blend if uh, blend modes in Photoshop. So if you right click on our curves layer and choose blending options, and we'll see the uh, very familiar blend mode dialog, but the blend if now is in lab color space instead of RGB and this is where things get really cool so if you click on the A channel we can see this is our green magenta channel and what I want to do here is just change it so that it responds to the underlying layer so right now it's going to blend everywhere 
but I know this color, the color of this car is essentially blue, and I can drag in these colors to sort of isolate it. So if we go over to the where the blue lives, we know that we really don't need these yellow values because the car underneath uh, is blue. So by just dragging this in here, we're going to see that we can pretty quickly knock out a lot of this. So what I want to do is just bring it back. I want to make sure that the, the paint is selected in the car. And once you get to that edge where you've got a you're pretty close, hold down the Alter Option key, and that's actually going to split these, and that's creating a feather. So what's happening is, you know, in be in the middle here, everything is fully selected. It's saying everything underneath here that shows up with essentially a, a blue to kind of a neutral color will be selected, and then everything that's fully yellow is not selected. In between the markers here is a transition from selected to not. So it's always good to split these sliders and make sure you don't have jagged edges. So I like to put at least a little bit of separation. Notice the sidewalk here is still kind of lit up green. So if I can pull this in to the point where the sidewalk is not showing, that's going to be ideal. And I want to do the same thing, bringing up this slider from the left and see if there's a point where I can knock out more of the background. And there really isn't much coming out. So this isn't helping me because I'm really selecting a lot of blue color in the image. So um, this isn't doing much. You know, likewise, we can take a look at the green magenta color split, which in this case, it's such a pure blue, it may not matter, but sometimes you can find things really, you know, knock out parts of the background. So uh, as I bring this up, you can see in the, the reflections on the window here that as I bring this up, I'm starting to knock out the reflections before I'm starting to knock out the car. So if I just, again, hold down Alt, split my sliders, and I can bring this up to the point where I'm getting a pretty decent selection that's blocking that out. And I'll do the same thing bringing down the top end here. And we can see that this is also starting to knock out some other colors. So I'm going to bring it in until I'm starting to lose the car. And I'm just going to split it to be careful. So again, we made a color adjustment in the curves globally, but then we restricted it by using this blend if. So we said, if the underlying color is a very light pink color, or, or I should say, and, um, it's some sort of a light blue. So kind of the, the blue kind of pink range, then we'll select that. And that makes perfect sense because when we look at this underlying color, this is really kind of a purplish blue. So it does have a little bit of magenta in it. So that's the logic of the blend if it looks at that color and looks for blue and magenta tones which we set with our blend if statements and then it makes that adjustment we had which is designed to move blue to green but of course it moves everything by the same amount so the blend if helps protect to just the areas we wanted to adjust now it's not perfect you can see that this uh, you know this little tree hanging down is kind of green some of the stuff in the background is kind of green and that's where you can start to paint on your mask to make some adjustments. But we've got some pretty good separation there. And that's how I essentially created these underlying layers where I have my conversion to red here, but it missed a few areas like here and some of the edges where they were starting to get kind of gray and too similar to the background. So I made one adjustment and then I duplicated it and I sort of loosened up the blend if on the second one and then I just painted that one in selectively. So I, I used two different layers. So I you know, did most of it with the bottom layer and the second layer just kind of hand retouched a few areas there. But that's how I went about creating this uh, color adjustment in the lab space. And once we've done that, I want to continue working on it using Lumenzia. I might want to do some uh, luminosity masking or you know, things like that. But in this case, I'm just going to demonstrate how I'd use the vignette tool. So I'm going to load up a lasso and in Lumenzia, if we um, create a selection around an object, and for some reason my Wacom tablet's not responding, so let's try it with the mouse. Um, but I just create a selection around whatever it is I want to vignette. You don't really don't have to be very precise here. I'm being a little bit cautious. It's gonna automatically feather this selection. So I've cre I'm creating a custom vignette now, if I was in the RGB color space, when I click on vignette, it would just create the vignette. But because we're in the lab color space, I'm going to get this notice that it's in lab 
would I like to convert it to RGB? And I'm gonna say yes. And it will automatically take all the layers we have and bundle them up into a smart object and then convert the image over to the RGB color space. And if needed, if it's a 32-bit color space, drop it down to, uh, to 16 so we can continue working. And so now that that conversion is completed, it's just a note from Lomenzia that it has been converted, we're ready to go. Uh, it didn't apply the vignette, and that's just simply because if for any reason you decided you wanted to undo this, you can just hit Command Z to undo in a single step. So this is the original image, and here's our smart object conversion. So at this point, I'm just gonna click on vignette, and we get this great looking vignette. In fact, I like it, and I'm gonna kick it up just a little bit more. But so we can see, we took the image in that vignette from here to here. So we've got you know full ability to work with Lomenzia. But if we want to make any changes to that underlying smart object, just double click its thumbnail. Photoshop's going to open it up as if it's a separate document here. And I can continue making changes in the lab color space. So if I go and maybe I decide that I want to punch this up to more of a cherry red, I can do that because we are still in lab color within this smart object. And once I've made the changes that I want, I just simply close this and it'll ask me if I want to save the changes. I'll say yes. It's going to put them back into the smart object in my um, modified image uh, over in the RGB color space. So now this smart object has been updated we're back in our RGB color space here and I can simply undo and you can see the before and after with this adjustment and like all steps in Lumenzia everything is notated here so you can see this you know update to the smart object um, so with just those couple little changes we went from this original blue car to this final cherry car there with a vignette around it so Really nice couple of adjustments, and I think that highlights the power of being able to work in the lab color space and how you can work in lab if you're using Lumenzia. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial.